In the early 1700s, a retirement village for pirates may have been started in Maine. This area of the New World was not controlled, and pirates at the time were becoming more and more sophisticated, even setting up democratic hierarchies on board their ships. One of the most progressive pirates of the time was the Prince of Pirates, Captain Black Sam Bellamy. Black Sam Bellamy only operated from 1716 to 1717, but in that time became the richest pirate ever. His ships, his crewmen, and his treasure were lost in 1717, but found again in 1984. But is that all to the story? Samuel Bellamy was born in Devon, England in 1689. In 1701, the War of Spanish Succession brought a need for sailors to the Royal Navy. Though Bellamy was only 13 at the time, he became a ship's boy for the Royal Navy. He worked his way up the ranks and learned to sail. In 1715, he traveled to Cape Cod in search of relatives, and this is where he met the love of his life, Goody Hallett. Later, she would become known as the Witch of Wellfleet and be accused of murdering her own baby. She spent much of the rest of her life in exile, and the coast of Cape Cod is said to be haunted by her ghost even today. During this same time in 1715, 12 ships left Havana, Cuba. These ships immediately ran into a hurricane off the coast of Vero Beach, Florida. 11 of the 12 ships were lost. About 1,500 sailors were also lost, along with tons of silver, priceless artifacts. This is known as the Spanish Treasure Fleet. Of course, word of the Spanish Treasure Fleet quickly spread up and down the coast, and it wasn't long before Bellamy had heard of it. Bellamy wanted to marry Goody. However, she was upper class, and her parents rejected the marriage. Bellamy promised her that he was going to go out, become rich, come back, and be able to marry her. By early 1716, Bellamy and his friend Palgrave Williams had gathered a group of men to go searching for the lost Spanish treasures. Palgrave's family were jewelers and allegedly also precious metal smugglers. Palgrave's sister was allegedly connected to Captain Kidd and Palgrave's family would aid Captain Kidd in selling off his stolen goods. So the Palgrave family was more than happy to fund the expedition to go down and search for this Spanish treasure. However, by the time they got there, they were a little late to the party and the low-hanging fruit had already been picked. They were able to find some coins and some artifacts, but they were never able to find an actual ship or a hole that would contain vast amounts of treasure. So they ended up not being very successful in their treasure hunt. So what do you do when you go treasure hunting and come up empty-handed? You become a pirate. Bellamy and Paul Graves actually became fairly successful pirates right at the beginning. They gathered a pirate crew and took a few small ships around Cuba, but this was very short-lived. Soon they became crew members of the Marianne, captained by Benjamin Hornigold. And Benjamin Hornigold's first mate was a man named Edward Teach, later became known as Blackbeard. Captain Hornigold felt loyalty to the British and would not attack any British ships. Though his crew was loyal to him, they didn't feel the same about this. Captain Hornigold took one of his ships and went to the Bahamas with several of his men. While they were gone, two of his ships, one captained by Bellamy and another captained by a famous pirate named Lavasseur, took some British ships. When Hornigold returned, he was incredibly upset, but this is also when he learned that only about 25 of his men supported his idea that they should not be attacking British ships, and about 90 of his crew believed that they should. They quickly took a vote and voted for Bellamy to become captain of the ship, and Hornigold and Blackbeard were booted out and left the ship along with the men that were loyal to them. In early 1717, Bellamy was sailing the Windward Passage between Hispaniola and Cuba when he came across a galley that he just had to have. The Witta Galley was a 102 foot long, 300 ton slave ship with 18 cannons and was capable of up to 15 miles per hour. The Witta was on its maiden voyage and the crew had just sold off 312 slaves. Because of the sale of these slaves, the Witta was packed with tens of thousands of gold coins, silver, ivory, all kinds of treasures. Bellamy, along with another ship captained by Lavasseur, 
chase down the Witta. It took 300 miles and three days before they could catch the Witta. When they caught up to the Witta, it took only a single shot to encourage the captain of the Witta, Lawrence Prince, to surrender to Bellamy. What happened next is not typically what you would think would happen when a pirate takes a ship. They didn't make him walk the plank. They didn't send him off onto a deserted island. Bellamy actually unloaded everything off of his ship onto the Witta, including 10 cannons, and then he traded ships with the captain of the Witta, Lawrence Prince. Black Sam Bellamy's reputation spread for generosity such as this, where he would mainly just take people back and let them go instead of killing people. He also didn't want to damage any of the ships, so he generally would not try and sink a ship, would try and block them in and win sort of a chess game, so none of the ships would be damaged and he could take whatever he wanted. He was so generous to the point that his crew called him Robin Hood and they called themselves Robin Hood's men. Let's not get carried away here, he was still a pirate. But if you were out on the seas and you were going to be taken by a pirate, this is the pirate that you wanted. Between 1716 and 1717, Bellamy was able to take over 50 ships and accumulate over $140 million, making him the richest pirate in history. So in little more than a year, Bellamy was able to go from failed treasure hunter to the richest and most powerful pirate in the area. At this point, pressure from the local navies was mounting, so they headed up the east coast, amassing more treasure along the way. It was during this time that Bellamy was said to have established a hideout at Machiasport, Maine. On April 26, 1717, a powerful storm sank the Witta along with his side ship. The tide from this powerful storm brought in gold and silver and jewels and all kinds of of artifacts along with 100 dead bodies. The shipwreck remained undiscovered until 1984 when explorer Barry Clifford discovered a pirate ship under 14 feet of water and 5 feet of sand. Undisputable proof that this shipwreck was the Witta came in 1985 when they discovered the bell that said the Witta Galley 1717. This was the first definitive pirate ship ever discovered. Over 200,000 artifacts have been recovered from this shipwreck. Also, there are currently four sets of bones that are awaiting DNA testing against known relatives of Sam Bellamy to see if these bones are those of of Captain Sam Bellamy. However, this may not be all to the story. There are many people around Machiasport, Maine that believe that Sam Bellamy built a fortress overlooking the bay. They believe that Sam Bellamy was setting up this oasis or this kind of pirate retirement community for pirates who evade capture to flee to this area. It's a very good location that is very well hidden. They could set up a fortress and see if anyone's coming and set up to defend it. In order to have this retirement community for pirates, they also needed money. So it's also said that they dug an underground vault where they kept all of their treasure. When the Witta sank and Sam Bellamy died, the area was abandoned and left in ruins. Some people believe that that vault is still down there between Ringshaw Point and the Old Rim Bridge, and that possibly some of that treasure is still down there today. I hope you enjoyed the story. If so, don't forget to like, leave comments, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.